welcome. This is Pastor Teach coming to you from Prevailing Word Ministries International. We love you and we're sharing with you prosperity principles. How to walk in wealth, how to walk in increase, how to walk in God's divine plan for your life. This is Meditations of a Kingdom Financier. Becoming the financier of the work of God according to God's plan for your life. God wants you so blessed that your life is a blessing to many. God wants you so blessed that your life is a blessing to your church. God wants you so blessed that your family will be so glad they know you. God doesn't want you to be in debt. We looked in our first segment on this, at the scripture, which tells us hey, that God says, oh, no man, nothing except love. God doesn't want you to be in debt to anybody. Clothing debt, food debt, car debt, house debt, any debt. God wants you totally free. But anyway, let's build our case today as we continue to study. I trust you've got your Bible, your notebook, your pen. Take some notes and learn some exciting principles that will change your life forever. I want to begin in, in uh, Genesis chapter 1 and I'm going to look at verse 11. The Bible says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, uh, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit, after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And evening and morning were the third day. We notice right at the beginning here that God in creating the earth or creating the, the, the plants and the trees and everything that was on the earth, he put in a law or a principle of ensuring that the future of that particular tree was within itself. So its ability to increase, to multiply, to replenish the earth was placed within it. So God places seed within each plant and animal so that it has the capacity to reproduce after its kind. This is a very powerful principle, tying it up with the scripture we looked at in Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. As long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Seed time and harvest. So when we understand that this law or this earth operates on the law of seed time and harvest, we then have to ask ourselves the question, how can I take advantage of this principle so that it helps me to walk in the reality of what I'm desiring? That brings us to a very important pausing moment right now. When I do my success coaching, one of the things that we, we do to help people walk in success is we help them define two phrases. One phrase is what we call current reality. The second phrase is what we call desired reality. Now, I don't know what your current reality is. Current reality is the situation that you are in based on the paradigms that you have adopted or the way of thinking that you have chosen to be your paradigm. So your life right now is a byproduct of your paradigms. Your current reality is defined by how you think. The quality of thinking determines the quality of living. So if you're going to experience financial wealth and increase, you're going to have to change the way you're thinking. Begin to think differently. So different thoughts or new paradigms or a paradigm shift will help you to achieve desired reality. The difference between current reality and desired reality is the quality of thinking. If you don't change the way you're thinking, and I am by no means bringing you a message of the power of positive thinking, I am bringing you the word of God. There's a big difference between the people that teach positive thinking or the coaches that talk about the power of positive thinking and I'm, I'm teaching you the word of God. The word of God is positive and the word of God does encourage us to think right, to think the word, to think that. So that is in a way positive thinking, but there's a world of difference between the Bible way of positive thinking and the secular way of positive thinking. So let's let's differentiate that and be clear about it. But God tells us that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And he also tells us that if the wicked man is to cease being wicked, let him throw away or cast away his thoughts and change his ways because as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways high above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. So if I change my thoughts or the processing of information in my mind, I can change the quality of living in my life. 
the, the, the quality of life you're living right now is a di direct tra translation or it is, in, it is closely related to the quality of thinking processes that you're, that you're holding in your life. So he says, I have put inside of every plant the ability for it to propagate, to multiply itself. So inside of you, there is the ability to multiply yourself. In Africa, we are very good at multiplying ourselves physically. We, I mean, we are the baby manufacturing place uh, center of the world. But the same way we have learned and mastered the art of reproducing babies, we should master the art of reproducing wealth. We have taken that principle and applied it in one area and not in every area of our life. So we are unbalanced in our multiplication. We are unbalanced in our fruitfulness. So I'm coming to you to help you understand that the same principle of seed time and harvest will apply in the area of money. And it begins with a change of mind. It begins with new paradigms. It begins with you thinking differently. It begins with you taking on a new mindset that says, I am going to think differently. I am going to process information in a different way. Let's build our case here a little bit and look at a few more principles. Now, when we talk about seed, there are a few things that I need you to understand. Seed is your guarantee of a better future. Seed is a picture of your tomorrow. The way you handle your seed will determine what tomorrow will look like. The seed produces and it has the ability to reproduce. It produces, but it has the ability to reproduce. And it reproduces perpetually, endlessly, as long as the environment is conducive for increase or for multiplication or for germination. It was interesting when they opened up one of the tombs in Egypt and they found seed that had been put there, buried there with one of the pharaohs hundreds of years ago. And when that same seed that had been under the ground for hundreds of years was put under conducive, the conducive environment, it began to produce wheat. That's interesting. Hundreds of years not doing anything, not going anywhere, not affected by insects or viruses or whatever, insecticides, pesticides. But when the, when the environment was conducive, suddenly it began to grow. So seed that is inside of you for ideas, business ideas, wealth creation ideas, everything else that, that you want to produce in your life. Once the conditions are conducive enough, you will begin to reproduce, you will begin to produce and reproduce and your ability to produce takes you out of debt your ability to reproduce takes you into wealth so what we need to master in africa is the ability to not just produce but to reproduce to manufacture and produce over time now this is really so powerful i'm, I'm so beside myself with excitement i can i cannot i can hardly contain myself but the principle operates every time the difference between people that have become poor, that are poor and the people that are rich is simply the rich have learned the ability to process information differently from the poor. And the environments within which we live are catalysts to reproducing whatever the environment is. When we teach uh, financial success in our school of business, Dillion School of Business, one of the principles that I teach is poverty and wealth is contagious and you need to understand that poverty and wealth is contagious why is this important to understand because when you understand this you will begin to hang around what you want to become poverty and wealth are contagious and this is why those that are affected by either one of these conditions are quarantined Poor people are kept together in communities so that their contamination is contained. Wealthy people are kept together so that their wealth and their ability to reproduce wealth is contained. Now, if you're going to step into wealth and come out of debt, you've got to start hanging around people that are living debt-free, people that are talking debt-freeness, people that are talking prosperity and increase. As long as you are confined to people that are thinking the way you've been thinking all along, you will remain in your condition. It's interesting how that Jesus came to a man who was blind one time, and he walks to the man and he, he realizes this man is blind and he wants to see. And instead of praying for him, Jesus takes him by the hand walks him out of the city and when they were outside of the city he prays for him and he says can you see he looks and he and he realizes now he looks and he says well i see men as uh, men as trees walking 
Jesus lays hands on him again and he says he saw plainly or saw perfectly. Now, Jesus could not do the miracle of healing within the city because of the prevailing paradigms or the way of thinking of the city. After the man was healed, Jesus told him, don't go back into the city. Go into a different environment because this environment is not conducive for creating the miraculous and it is not conducive for sustaining the miraculous. If you are going to change your financial position, my dear brother, my dear sister, you are going to have to cut out people from your life. I wrote a book. Check on our website on, on successparadigms.co.za. I wrote a book and the book is called Success Paradigms 101. And one of the principles that I teach in the book is the principle of company. The company you keep will determine the level of success you experience in any area of your life. Hang around people with marriages that are breaking up, yours will break up sooner or later. Hang around people that are in debt, you'll be in debt. Hang around people that are struggling financially, you'll struggle financially. Hang around people that talk prosperity, increase and wealth, you'll begin to move or shift from that to what, what they are speaking or what is the prevailing paradigm. Just like this man, Jesus takes him out of the city and he is able to experience a miracle and he says, don't go back. Because once you go back, they will start saying, hey, we cannot believe this. How can you you be seen. You are born blind. You could not see. This is not possible. And the more you hear that, those words will create that reality. Why do you need to listen to teachings like what I'm giving you today? Why do you need to keep listening to this? Why? Because the more you hear it, it's creating a paradigm. It's creating an attitude. It's creating a heart. It's creating a, a way of, of, of thinking that will bring you out of poverty. Here's my closing statement. There is seed on the inside of you. We need to provoke that seed so that seed can begin to produce and it will continue to move on to reproducing. Fruit satisfies, but fruit perpetuates. There's a big difference. When you find fruit, okay, that's good, eat it. But don't take seed and eat it. I told you about my story in the first segment when I was teaching how that I grew up on, or we grew up doing a lot of farming. And one of the things that we learned was never eat the seed. Well, of course, the seed, because it is treated, you couldn't eat it. So you, had, you knew clearly that this is seed, the way it is packaged, the way it is contained, the way it is set aside. You never ate the seed. But you could eat the fruit that you harvested from the, from the, from the, the crop that, that came out. Why? Because fruit is for eating, but seed is for perpetuating, it is for multiplying into generations. Fruit, so fruit gratifies and meets my need now, but seed is an investment, it shapes my tomorrow. Fruit is a reward, but seed is a guarantee. So your guarantee of success and financial freedom is the seed that we are sowing right now of the Word of God. In, in the segments that are going to come, we're going to look at a lot more scriptures that specifically change your paradigm in the area of finances and wealth but you need to have these foundations in place so that your thinking is right so that your appreciation of truth is right in conclusion let's make a confession let's speak this out just like we did in our first segment i love to get people to speak things because the fruit of your mouth will change and redefine your life i am a fruitful bow even a bow by a well whose branches go over the wall. The blessing of the Lord is at work in my life. And it makes me rich and it adds no toil with it. Therefore, I am increasing and multiplying in Jesus' name. Amen. This is taken from a passage of scripture in the book of Proverbs and the first part is from Genesis chapter 49 and verse 22. You need to speak this on a continual basis and begin to declare that you are fruitful. You're a fruitful bow, a bow by a well. You're going over the wall. There's no limit to what you can become because the seed that is in you is beginning to explode and to multiply. My dear brother, my dear sister, your life will never be the same as you allow the word of God to live, to grow, to multiply on the inside of you. This is Pastor Titch coming to you from Prevailing Word Ministries International, a family for you to belong.